we have a question that came in on the RTS Instagram asked by Milush, Milush Man. He asks, do you find some athletes respond to less specific work than others? The short answer is yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've had some lifters who, you know, you, you get the classic lifters who respond to classic training stimulus. We've had some success with some training strategies that train the comp lift pretty normally, I would say. Variety of intensities over the course of a series of development blocks. But the other lifts, we more or less eliminate the SDE category, the development exercises, those close variations, and just do a lot of preparatory exercises, the things that are more muscularly focused. The, it's not always isolation work, but I'm talking about things like lunges and leg presses as it relates to squats, or overhead press and dumbbell bench as it relates to bench press, things like that. We've had some success with training strategies like that. I wouldn't say it's everybody. Well, obviously it's not everybody, right? I wouldn't say it's the majority of people, but especially if we've got athletes that are technically proficient, uh, especially if they're having any sort of recovery issues in response to heavier weights, that seems to be a strategy that's worth exploring. Yeah, I thought this question was super interesting. So I think the way that they teed this up was kind of the classic, a classic modern uh, powerlifter uh, frequency structure of like uh, two, two times a week squatting, three times a week benching, and once a week deadlifting, or something along those lines, right? Could you set it up that way if you wanted to, having a 1x frequency microcycle, so one microcycle per week? And yeah, you can. Doing 3x benching is gonna be difficult because the main constraint you're gonna run into is that the stimulus needs to be sufficiently different uh, between those exposures. If it's the same stimulus, then it's gonna kind of blur that line. You know, now you've got a situation where some of your stimulus is the same, but then some of it's different. You know, it's not an impossible thing to, to tease out. Uh, you just gotta test it and see what the time to peak is going to be. It's easier to have that predictable time to peak if the stimulus is sufficiently different. And something that we've kind of just used as a rule of thumb is 10%. If we're talking about the two times a week squatting, maybe your first session is 70% and your second session is 80% or vice versa, it doesn't really matter. But there's 10% separating them. With the bench, it's a little bit more difficult. And you may say 70%, 80%, 90%, and that would work. But where do you go in the next development block? Because now you've used this huge range of intensities and your next development block would need to be sufficiently different from the first development block and also the the exposures need to be different from each other. That's probably the main constraint that you're going to run into is that kind of resource management. But as long as you're taking care of that, then you can do it. And maybe if it's something that you respond well to, it's it's a one-off block. So you would do one block like that and then maybe you do kind of an off-season block that doesn't have any comp lift at all. That's a thing too. You can find ways around that if you're willing to be creative. Reactive training systems.